Howdy folks, Timber Drifter here with my final review on Peter Stockaby Luxury Twist Flake. That's uh, this stuff right here. Beautiful flake. Smells good. No, I haven't researched it. I don't know if this has a casing on it or not. I tend to think that it does. It smells a little bit of butterscotch. So I'll have to look into that. But my uh, final impression on, uh, on this tobacco is, eh, I don't know. It's nothing special. Finishing up a bowl here in my funkiest old corn cob. Little tiny bowl, just full of charcoal. <laughs> Horn stem. About 20 degrees out, so I'm getting a little bubbly down in there. See so if I can clean it out with the pipe cleaner while I talk here. So this pipe is the only pipe that it smokes really well in. Uh, I've tried it in a couple other corn cobs and it's tasted funky. Um, and other pipes that I normally smoke flakes in, or even other things. Uh, it tastes good when you first light it, and for the first, I don't know, five or six puffs. And then it starts to get this funny, sort of a bitter chemical hang to it. I don't really like that. <laughs> but in this pipe it smokes pretty well. Some of the other pipes I smoked it in, I think my first video on I was smoking this pipe, it smoked really good about halfway down the bowl and then it got funky. Smoked it in my Stanwell Zebrano, an excellent flake pipe, beautiful pipe, one of my favorites. It smoked like uh, burning garbage in there. My other pipes I regularly smoke flakes in, my old Peterson. Tasted good for a little while and just got, got funky. Smoked it in the Meerschaum. Wasn't any good in that either. My shop pipe. Yuck. And I have, uh, I fully rubbed this tobacco out. And I, I don't recommend that. It was horrible. Uh, I have partially rubbed it out. I have packed it tight. I've packed it loose. Uh, and I have found the best way to smoke it, where I don't get any chemical strange flavor to it at all, uh, is just to, for this pipe, since it has such a small bowl, I take one of those flakes and I tear it in half, and then I fold it over twice, and then rub it out fairly vigorously but to where it's all still attached together, and then I just kind of loosely place it in there, push it in just a little bit, and sprinkle some, you know, little shards of tobacco on top of it and light it up and it'll smoke really well that way in this pipe. And this is kind of a magical pipe. A lot of things smoke really well in this pipe. Half and half uh, smokes beautifully in this pipe. It's, it's incredibly flavorful and, and not bitter and sour at all. Uh, and this tobacco tastes really good in here. This isn't the original stem to this pipe. This is a horn stem. I found that at a thrift shop, just the stem, no pipe attached to it. The original stem for this pipe, I bit all the way through it in a near traffic accident. I was uh, going through an intersection where I didn't have a stop sign, and the other people did. And I guess they assumed that I had a stop sign, and they pulled right out, nearly hit me. And uh, after I got calmed down and continued driving down the road, I realized that I still had the pipe stem in my mouth, and the pipe was down between my legs. I had bitten all the way through it. So I was glad to find one that just fit right in there nicely.
but it smokes really nicely here. It, uh, it has just a hint of sourness to it, not in a bad way, kind of like jackknife plug has a hint of sourness to it. Um, it's got that fresh mown hay or grass, just a hint of that. It's very soft. And just a hint of butterscotch, just a hint. So I'll have to look into that and see if that really is the casing on this tobacco. But I'm glad I found a pipe that it will smoke in uh, because I have about four ounces of it left. And the smell doesn't seem to be, uh, doesn't seem to bother people too much. Nobody, nobody has complained about it. Of course, I don't smoke around a whole lot of people. But I haven't had any of those compliments like, oh, my granddad smoked a pipe and I just love that smell. I haven't had any of that, but I haven't had any people going, <coughs> either. So, it must be halfway decent. And I don't smoke in the house, so I... It's hard for me to get a room note, you know. The way I used to do that, I'd smoke in the room, and then when I was done, I'd come back, you know, ten minutes later, and I could smell it. I can't, can't do that anymore. I don't have that situation. More Smith Forge hard cider that I'll just pour all over myself here. But uh, I've got a book review as well. Cider Hard and Sweet History, Traditions, and Making Your Own by Ben Watson. This is an excellent book if you're at all interested in cider or perry, which is the same, th it's cider made from pears, I guess. Uh, this is the third edition, it came out last year. I got this book from the library, and I'm probably going to buy a copy for myself. I like hard cider a lot. But uh, I noticed the last few years you start to see it in the liquor stores more. Probably the last three years it's really grown in popularity. Uh, I counted 20 different kinds uh, in the liquor store a couple days ago. And they're not all different manufacturers, but different different brews. And the ones that I like the most are, I like the Smith Forge really well. I like most of the Crispins I've had. But for the most part, the rest of them taste pretty sweet to me. And I guess maybe... That comes from my initial experience with cider, which was in northern Spain. In Basque country. I was there with some friends. And we went to a restaurant that had huge cider barrels mounted in the wall. And they make their own cider there. And they, uh, they give you a glass, and they show you how to tap it. Yeah tap it and bring your glass really far away and the cider sprays out of the glass to get lots of air in the cider, open it up a bit. And I'd never had hard cider before. And it was uh, pretty interesting. <laughs> huh. I was primarily a beer and wine drinker at the time. And not even good wine yet. I hadn't, hadn't developed my taste for good wine. But uh, that cider was dry and uh, tannic. <laughs> but there was something about it, and I drank quite a bit of it that night. Ate a lot of really good food that night, too. Really good ham, different kinds of cured ham, and, and duck, and lots of potatoes. Salad. Oh, it was a beautiful night. Anyway, good cider. In fact, I think there's a picture in this book of that kind of a place. Yeah. Hmm. 
You can see those big barrels mounted in the wall, and then he's tapping it here, and the cider is going all the way out into his glass. I think you can see that. That's how that restaurant was, and that was my first experience with cider. So the first time I had cider here in the States was uh, Woodchuck. Uh, I didn't even drink the whole six-pack. It was just nasty soda pop with a hint of apples. So anyway, if, uh, if you're a beer drinker, I recommend trying ciders, especially if you can find like a local a place, an orchard that produces its own cider. And I'm going to try brewing some of my own this fall. Uh, north of where I live here, there's a lot of apple orchards, and if they have a good crop this year, I think I'll go buy some, some regular fresh pressed cider and try doing about five gallons myself. Yeah, anything you can do yourself, it's worth trying. I'm going to try growing tobacco again this year and, and making hard cider. Yeah, it's a lot cheaper growing your own, too. I know some people up uh, in the UP, the uh, Upper Peninsula of Michigan, that grow their own tobacco, and I've, I've smoked some of that. And it's interesting smoking just one, or a leaf from just one plant. It's pretty one-dimensional, but it's, it's very interesting. Yep, a little wet. Push, push a pipe cleaner in here while I'm talking. So, Peter Stockaby Luxury Twist Flake. Probably be my work smoke this summer in this pipe. This pipe tends to ride around in my pocket. Smoke every once in a while, break time, lunch time. See if I can finish smoking that stuff up by the end of the summer. But uh, although I can't recommend this tobacco, I I do recommend this book. So check it out if you can. All right.